Once you're capable of handling the pressure cooker, once you're the person who's capable in the face of the uncomfortable, you can now be the person who helps those that aren't. And that's why I call everyone out there right now in the face of this who's been affected, who sees it happening, there's this moment in time to do something. If you are capable in the face of being uncomfortable, right now, it's your duty to help burden the weight of others. So I wanted to talk about something here. Um, I think it's very appropriate in, uh, in light of the current week. And, and I think it's appropriate and maybe not the way that a lot of people think, bullying. We've talked about, and usually you only hear about bullying when it involves some usually gay person uh, who's in the nightly news because they were bullied in school. By the way, I usually don't buy that. Yeah. I, you've got to be the stupidest person in the world Today, to do. bully a gay or trans person in school. As a matter of fact, plan. I bet you they would say like, hey, Timmy, what are you, gay? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't <laughs> let the dean know, I'm so sorry. Whereas when I was a kid, I got called it all the time because I wasn't gay, but you know, I was a, a loser. Uh, you can just find my pictures in high school. I was bullied all are you the time. talking about now? A little bit. <laughs> I feel like I don't get the respect in the office that I quite deserve, but you know what? That just, them's the breaks. <laughs> no one wants to go have hot dogs with the man who signs the front of checks. <laughs> I'll be fine. Um, <laughs> but we're talking about bullying. And this is what, because they've tried to accuse us of being bullies, and it, more, more generally conservatives of being bullies. Here's the thing I would like to, to, to sort of posit. The reason that bullying in high school is, is so unbearable, or in the workplace, for example, is because it's chronic, it's systemic. If you have a bully in high school, or if you have a boss or a supervisor who's a bully, you still have to go in the next day. And I believe me, I get it. I had days where I would just go to sleep, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to wake up. I know that sounds terrible. I'm like, oh, I don't want to. I just hate in my life going to school. And a part of it was bullying. A part of it was just I wasn't cut out for public school as we had in Canada. But the real problem there is you have to face that bully every single day. There's no way to get away from it. That's a big defining factor for me and bullying. Now, let's compare that to, for example, us doing a video or a rebuttal here where maybe 2% of the video is us making light or us making fun of somebody in a way that they don't like. The thing is, that's not chronic. That's not systemic. You can shut it off. You can change the channel or online. You can just click on the next suggested video, which is probably turtle humping work boot or angry cat or tranny makeup tutorials, transy makeup tutorials. Now we can't use any words. They're all <laughs> yeah, being banned out. retroactively, <laughs> right? Out. You can change the channel. Now compare that to say, removing the ability for anyone of a political persuasion to be able to make a living, including the 12 to 15 people here at Loud Earth Credit. It's not myself. This is an entire team of people. What's more chronic? What's more systemic? Who's the bully? The person who does a video that is never even addressed to you. And this is all conservatives out there, or the person who wants to make sure that they ruin everyone's life who's been involved with that video forevermore. Or anyone who might even cover that video, even non-political channels, as you see with the apocalypse. People who just happen to cover it, we want you gone. Some people were surprised at the apology video that we issued. And I... Be, it's rough. <laughs> when you go back and you watch it, you're like, oh, that was, yeah, maybe a couple of those. Uh, but they were actual jokes that have appeared in the show. You shouldn't be surprised, though. Why? That's how you deal with bullies. I I've seen a lot of conservatives. Well, I'm the reasonable conservative. I'm the, no, listen, you don't give in. You don't, well, you have to push back from the very beginning, right away. You give up no ground, unless you're wrong. But if you know you're not wrong, you don't apologize. And that's how we handle it. And you know what? A lot of people think that applies just to bullies, but um, I would say it applies to all high pressure scenarios in life in general. There are some people who are naturally kind of what we refer to as game day players, right? Some people are born with it. Naturally under pressure, they have another level, another switch. My dad is that guy. Um, and if you ever trained in a sport, you know some people was, they say Tarzan in the, in the gym, Jane on the field. There's some guys who are just unbelievable in training but they can't put it together when it comes to game day. And then there's some guys who are kind of lackluster, you wouldn't pick out of a lineup, and then when it comes time to perform, boom, they're on it. Some people need pressure to perform. They need to see themselves bleed before they get their head in the mix. Uh, and here's one thing I will say. Well, I don't know that ev everyone on this team is a naturally born game day player. No one here in a lot of cutter offices wilts under pressure. It's why, and I said this to everyone, because I know I could see that people were scared in the office when I walked in. It's why the attack from Vox, big media, it couldn't have happened to a more capable group of people. Not talking about myself, because how, just how much you see Vox bitch about how behind the scenes, all the work they put in, it's not even close to what these people put in behind the scenes. And all of the work that you don't see, that you don't know about, believe me, if you have someone on the front lines who you want fighting the bullshit, 
right now, if I could handpick them, it would be the people who are in this room and the people who are in the green room watching. We've had a lot, and I'll tell you this, we've had a lot of trial runs in those first couple of weeks at this company that don't work out. Uh, there's about a two week, about a month mark because it's a pressure cooker. Things like this week happen. It doesn't happen in most workplaces. If they stick around after that, they're here. Usually uh, for a very, very long time. Not everyone is born as a game day player, okay? So let me be clear because I know some people saying, well, that's not me. Everyone can become one. Just like not everyone is born with the backbone to stand up to bullies, everyone can grow one. I've seen it happen. I've seen people in my high school who would wilt to bullies and then they decided to grow a spine never again. I was that guy at one point. I was the guy who walked away holding my jaw. And then at a certain point I said, okay, that's not gonna happen again. So let me ask you this, is that something you'd like? Does that sound like a skill set that's valuable to you? To be in the heat, to be in the pressure cooker, to be in the pocket with someone right in your face, right in your grill, and to feel totally capable? And by the way, notice I didn't say comfortable. I said capable. No one here at this team, no one who is, has a skill set that I'm talking about, no one's comfortable with being part of a concerted assault, for example, from a billion dollar media company. No one, okay? It's distinctly uncomfortable. Yeah, everyone here puts on a good face, we laugh, we joke, but you know what? There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. It's distinctly scary. But everyone here has rallied, okay? And they've handled it very capably. Every single person. And not everyone here was always that way. How does it happen? It starts with being capable in the face of being uncomfortable. And the only way to get to that point is to get familiar with being uncomfortable. And how does that happen? It just takes, it's like building up calcium deposits on your bones, right? You've seen boxers, they do it with their hands, kick, they do it with their shins, they actually build it up. They just hit it with a little bit of a screwdriver. That's something they come and do, or a, 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 what it, like a Pillsbury Doughboy roller. I don't know, some kind of a roller. I have no idea. That's a rabbit trail, it doesn't matter, I'm tired, shut up. The point is it happens though over time, right? Getting used to a little impact, getting used to the grind, getting used to the nicks, the bruises, getting used to being hungry, getting used to being tired, getting used to feeling disoriented. All of that has happened this week. And if you do it enough, if you do it consistently, if you stop avoiding anything other than your creature comforts at all costs, eventually you will find yourself capable of, when in the thick of it, being able to slow down, breathe, Take inventory, accept the stress of a moment, the rush, the chaos, navigate what you need to do. You will become a game day player. And by the way, this isn't self-help advice. I don't like that term because it's narcissistic by its very nature. This isn't about loving yourself or feeling good about what you see in the mirror. What good would that do anyone here in the face of the apocalypse if I look in the mirror and say, well, you know what, I got mine. That doesn't help anybody, that's not what this is about. It's about helping others. Because guess what? Once you're capable of handling the pressure cooker, once you're the person who's capable in the face of the uncomfortable, you can now be the person who helps those that aren't. You can help them to lean on you. You can bear the weight, not for yourself, but for others, because guess what? Improving yourself, yeah, that's great, of course you should. But carrying your own weight is not an accomplishment. It's the bare minimum. Getting to where you can burden the weight of others, that's something special. And let me tell you, there are a lot of people out there. There's the burden, there's the weight of a lot of people, a lot of unseen people, a lot of smaller channels don't necessarily have the platforms that we do or that you do. And that's why I call everyone out there right now in the face of this who's been affected, who sees it happening, there's this moment in time to do something. If you are capable in the face of being uncomfortable, right now, it's your duty to help burden the weight of others. And I'll see you there. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel or hit the notification bell. Do it, I'll wait a second. Do you hear that little ding? It actually didn't make a ding sound. I just did it. It happened while my mouth was doing it and you thought it was coming from your computer. Uh, so that's fun. Also, there's some videos playing in these boxes next to me. Go watch those. You might enjoy them. You might not. I don't care.